Welcome to our fifth lecture, which is going to be on logic signals and fundamental concepts of the Boolean algebra. This lecture is going to be the first one in a series of lectures all the way up to week 12 on combinatorial logic. We're going to start first with basic theorems of the Boolean algebra. Now, these theorems have names. You do not need necessarily to learn them by heart but you do need to understand them, and they're very easy to understand. However, when we proceed with three or n variable theorems, these are a little bit more difficult to understand, so I would, uh, my advice to you would be to learn them by heart so that you can use them. And we're going to conclude with the Morgan theorem, which is very important. It is applied on n variables, and fortunately, unlike other uh, multivariable theorems, it's very easy to understand and to remember. However, you need to practice a lot with it so that you can apply it in practice. So, after you finish with the lecture of this week, you will be able to know the basic two and three variable theorems and n variable theorems, including the Morgans. In case you're wondering why the above are useful, the answer is very simple. It's because by applying them on Boolean expressions, you simplify them, which implies that the equivalent circuits will be more efficient. And by saying more efficient, I mean they will be smaller. In other, in other terms, this means they will have a smaller number of gates. And along with that comes smaller, lower power consumption and a higher speed. So without further ado, let us proceed with the AND gate. Let's, to be more precise, let's remind ourselves of the AND gate. As you should have known by now, the AND gate is symbolized like this. It has two inputs and one output. Y over here, which is the output, is the logical multiplication between x1 and x2. And this is the truth table, according to which an AND gate can have one as a result only if both inputs are equal to one. Now, if you use switches, you understand it very easily. AND is essentially equivalent to a series of switches. Both of them need to be one in order for a circuit to be closed and the output to be one again. Now let's discuss how you would implement AND with diodes. But before I do that, let me clarify that diodes is not the main topic of this uh, lecture. We're going to talk more about diodes later on uh, in this unit. We're just now giving this as an example for you to understand how things work in practice. A diode looks like this, and it's symbolized as this. Essentially, it is a two-terminal electronic component. This is one terminal and this is the other terminal. And it conducts electrical current primarily in one direction, the one which is, which is implied by the arrow over here. And that shows uh, the forward low impedance direction of uh, the current flow. This is the definition, if you want to take a minute to read it. Now, in the example we're going to show, we're going to show how you build an end gate with diodes. As you can see here, we've got three diodes. So taking a look at the diagram, you see that there are three inputs. Suppose that we apply a positive voltage here, something like 5 volts. Then the current that flows from the resistance, which as you can see is again 5 volts over here, the voltage, it will cause the output to be 5 volts, which if we assume a positive logic convention, that would be interpreted to logical 1 anything between 4 and 5 volts to be more precise. But if any of the inputs over here was not 5 volts, anything lower than that, then 
the output would be uh, something close to one volt, which would be interpreted as zero. So if everything is four volts or five, then the result is one, otherwise it's zero. Now, if we were using a negative logic convention, things would have been the other way around. You would have a one only when all the inputs were one volt, and for any other combination, it would be zeros. So enough about diodes. It was only to refresh our memory and remember an example with an AND gate. The main topic of today's uh, lecture is Boolean algebra. Diodes is something which is going to concern us on a later lecture. So a Boolean algebra, historically, we call it Boolean because it was founded by George Boole, an English mathematician, philosopher, and logician. So the Boolean algebra is also known as a switching algebra because it deals with two states. And this is very useful, as you know, for digital systems. There are three basic Boolean operations. There is the logical AND, the logic OR, or the logical NOT. And they are all realized with logic gates. These operations handle Boolean variables as input and output and take two states. Now let's see that with an example. Suppose that you have this phrase over here. If it rains or the forecast is bad, then I will take an umbrella. Now, we can actually build from this phrase a truth table. We identify three input variables, excuse me, two input variables and one output variable. The first input variable is rain. The second one is a bad forecast. And then we've got the output. Now, based on the definition of logical OR, the output would be true, which means that you will take an umbrella with you. If either of the former statements is true, or if both of them are true. The only case that you're not going to take an umbrella with you is when both statements are false. Let's focus on the OR operation. We also call it logical addition. So, if X and Y input variables of an OR operation and S and Z is the OR operation result, so these are the inputs and this is the output, then Z as an output is true if at least one of the two inputs is true. And as you can see, just like every other gate, there is an equivalent with a switching circuit. More or less, an OR gate can be implemented by two parallel uh, switches. This is its truth table. You're already familiar with it. And now comes a question. Just pause the video at this stage and think of why OR is not actually a binary numerical addition, even though we call it logical addition. And we use this, this symbol uh, to uh, denote the OR logical addition. If you thought about this last line over here, you're right. So despite calling it logical addition and despite using the plus symbol, it's not an equivalent to a binary numerical addition. Now let's see the AND gate. Now, unlike the OR gate, you see that the AND gate has an equivalent of a series of switches. In order for the output to be one, both of the switches, if you want here in this example, should be controlled and pushed. Uh, in, in other words, both inputs should be one. And we call it logical multiplication and we use the dot symbol. This is the truth table. As you can see, the only way you can have 
the, now the output being equal to one is by both inputs being equal to one. And if you ask yourself a similar question, like the one that we posed about the OR gate, then the answer in this case is that yes, they are similar. Uh, the logic multiplication, logical multiplication is similar to the numerical multiplication. If you multiply the inputs, you will get the output. Now let's see not, or as we call it, the complement action. This is very easy. If something comes in as one, then the output is zero. If something comes in as zero, the output is one. And this is the symbol that we use in order to complement a variable. Something like x prime over here. This is the truth table, and this is the not gate. 